Okay, so now we pass to the new chapter, Techniques of Integration. In real life, you don't have to do these techniques by hand, but you have to know how these techniques apply to resolving an integral. So when you are using software, sometimes you just give your function to the software. It doesn't handle it. Then you break it down. You, so you, you understand how the software works. Okay, software is using these techniques. So you make the, you reformulate the function in a way so that these techniques will be applied more easily by the software. So that's how much you should understand these techniques. But of course, uh, in the exam, you have to do these by hand. But after the exam, you, just, you can forget about doing these things uh, by hand. But you have to understand the mechanism behind this. OK, so this is integration by parts. So integration by parts technique. <coughs> so this is a theoretically a stupid rule because it transforms one integral into another integral. Both of them are integrals. Okay, so you don't expect that things will be any simpler, but in in practice, it resolves a lot a lot of difficult integrals and gives you easier to deal with the integrals. So the idea. Okay, so where do I start? So the idea is the following thing. You take, let u and v be differentiable functions functions of x, OK? <coughs> so we know we take, take the differential of u times v, OK? So this is u prime v the u plus, uh, how does this thing, u v prime dv, OK? Now integrate both sides. Integrate the u v, integrate u prime v the u. Well, not, not the u, sorry. <coughs> this is dx, right? dx dx. X. So actually, when you do this, okay. So this part. So maybe I do one more step before I write this. So you will have v d u plus u d v. Okay. So that's the differentiation rule. Then you resolve this part. So this is v u prime d x plus u v prime d x. Okay. Now you integrate this and this. They are the same. So plus integral u v prime dx. This part, integral and differential, you see they are inverses to each other. So this is u v. OK, so how far can we push this? So let's say I want this one generally. Integral of u v prime dx is equal to u v minus this integral u prime v dx, OK? So theoretically, this is totally stupid because you, you want to integrate something of this form. And instead of this, you integrate another integral of exactly the same form, OK? But in real life, sometimes uh, when you take u prime, it is simpler. but here you are integrating, you see, passing from v prime to v means you are integrating uh, v prime. When you integrate something, it becomes complicated. So theoretically, you don't gain anything. See, this is what they call zero gain games, OK? But in practice, it works. <coughs> so one more step here. Also, you can apply this in definite integrals. U v prime dx equals u v evaluated from x equals a to x equals b minus integral a to b u prime v dx. OK, so let us, <coughs> let us work on this thing. So sometimes we write this. OK, so this one. So this is the thing. Sometimes we write this. We write 
this as the following. Integral u dv is equal to u v minus integral v du, okay, because u prime dx is du. So it is sometimes easier to keep this in mind, okay, so one way or the other. <clears throat> now, when it comes to applying these things, you see you are given this integral, okay, so here you have a function. A function is not given to you as u times v prime, it is given as f of x, okay. So after being trained in calculus, you look at f of x and you see it as u prime u times v prime. Okay, so that's that's the creative part here. Once you see it that way, you change this integral into this integral, and if you are lucky, this integral is easy to handle with. So let's do that in real life situations, real life of a scientist and real life of an engineer. So let's start with <coughs> things. You see, you are try, you are hoping that uh, there is always this hope that u prime will be easier. So what is the function whose u prime is easier? X. If this is x, you don't see any x here. Okay. And if this uh, this function, if you can see this function as v prime, it means you already see v. So you write v here. Okay. So let's start with some examples. Okay, so we want to look at x sine x dx, okay? <coughs> so looking at these things, we immediately see this as, this is u, this is uh, <coughs> derivative of cosine, up to a sine, okay? But normally to make it easier, we try to see it like this. Okay, so here, I say let u be x, in which case du will be just dx, okay? <coughs> and let dv be what remains here, sine x dx, okay? Then v will be minus cosine x. Here you can write plus c, but if you play with these things, you see that this plus c here cancels at the end, and you again, uh, get this thing as if you chose the constant zero. Okay, so you put these things in here. <coughs> so what does the rule say? The rule says first you multiply these. So this is minus x cosine x minus, you integrate this last line. Okay, so integral minus cosine x dx. Okay, so let's do this now. This is x cosine x plus integral of cosine x. What is integral of cosine x? Sine x, right? If you take derivative of sine, you get sine x plus constant, and you put this. Okay, let us check now, check that the derivative. Check the derivative. Okay, so... <coughs> Derivative of this, I have minus here, right? This minus. Okay, if I take the derivative of this, this is minus cosine x uh, plus x sine x, okay? Because derivative of cosine is minus sine kills this. And plus derivative of sine x is cosine x. They cancel and I have my function, okay? So let's see what happens if you take integral x squared sine x dx. Okay, so I try again. So let me, before this, let me do the same integral with the others because how do you magically choose these things? That's just, so let's say one prime integral x sine x dx. This time I say let u be sine x, because I can also understand sine x, derivative, etc. So du is cosine x dx, and dv is x dx, what remains, and v is 1 over 2 x squared. Okay, so I apply this, I multiply this and this, 1 over 2 x squared, sine x minus, I integrate this line, 
1 over 2 integral x square cosine x dx. Okay, now I was trying to understand this. I found a more complicated integral. Okay, so this is very typical in uh, playing with the integration by parts. Depending on your choices here, sometimes the integral becomes simpler, sometimes it becomes uh, more complicated. Okay, so if it becomes more complicated, you say, okay, I'll change my choices here. <coughs> but this integral is not impossible. By correct choice, we can also look at this integral. So let me look at, okay, let me continue with this one because I want to understand different powers of this, sine x dx. Okay, so after you do several tries and errors like this, you know that in these cases, uh, it, is more, it is safer to take the polynomial as u, because when you take the derivative, it is drastically simplified. It's not always the case to, uh, that the right choice is the polynomial, but you try, okay? So that's uh, always, with the integration, you always try. Here we tried, and the trial was not very successful. Here we tried, and it was successful. Okay, so here I try u equals x squared and dv equals sine x dx. So du is 1 over 2 x dx. v is minus cosine x. Okay. Then what happens? I have, I multiply these two. I have minus x squared cosine x <coughs> minus minus another plus 1 over 2 integral x cosine x dx. Okay. Well, there is hope in this because we just handle something similar to that. <coughs> du is 2x. Ah, 2x, okay. <laughs> okay, so here. Okay, thank you. So here we will try this using the same method over here. Okay, so let's say uh, integral x cosine x dx, u is equal to x, du is equal to dx, dv should be now cosine x dx, and v will be sine x. Okay, so this is now equal to this times this, x sine x minus integral, this part, sine x dx, and I know that the antiderivative of this is minus cosine x, so I'll have x sine x plus cosine x plus c. So I will substitute this over here. Okay, so let us say, hence, I have this integral, integral x squared sine x dx. It's equal to minus x squared cosine x plus two times, uh, two times this thing, okay? 2x two x, two x sine x plus 2 cosine x plus 2 times c is just an arbitrary constant. Okay, so this is again another phenomena that appears very often if integration by parts. <coughs> By, by applying integration by parts, you obtain an integral, which is simpler, but then that, again, requires some integration by parts, so you keep going until you resolve everything, okay? So, and sometimes there are unexpected tricks that you should play. What if we don't have two functions, okay? So in these, in these examples, I had two functions, so I, I tried one of them as u, the other one times dx as dv. So what if I have only one function? Okay, ah, let me erase this first. If you have just one function, the other function is automatically one, okay? If the other function is one, of course, you don't want to take as du. Uh, you don't want to take it as u because u prime will be zero and you won't gain anything, okay? So let's look at 
ln x. Okay, so integral ln x dx. Okay. So the other function is 1. If I take 1 as u, then I take this thing as dv. If I say something is dv, then I have to find v. But that's already the problem here. So we switch places. So here we try u equals ln x. dv is equal to what remains. That's 1 times dx. Okay, so here you see du is 1 over x dx, okay, and v is x. I check here without going any further to see if I can integrate this product. This product is 1, I can integrate it, so there is hope, I continue. Okay, so this times this is my first thing, x ln x minus integrate this times this. Okay, so let me write just dx. Okay, so here we have 1 over x times x here. Okay, well, this is now x ln x minus x plus c. Okay, so check the derivative. The derivative of this is 1 times ln x plus x times 1 over x, which is 1 minus the derivative of this, which is minus 1. Once cancel, and you end up with ln x. Okay, so this is something that you do with, uh, every time you see a horrible function here, this is, one, this is one of the techniques that you try. Sometimes it works like this, sometimes it doesn't work. You have to be more inventive. So another thing that this works is when you have arc sine x dx. <coughs> okay, so again, here we try u equals arc sine x, and dv is equal to dx. So v will be x, and du is du is dx over square root 1 minus x square, right? That was the derivative of arc sine, so you have to remember a few things. Again, I check secretly without going any further. If I multiply this and this, can I integrate this? There is x in the denominator. So if I say 1 minus x squared equal to u, du will be here. So there I'll use substitution. Okay, so this looks reasonable. So I continue. This times this, x arc sine x minus integral x over square root 1 minus x squared dx. Okay, so this here use substitution u equals 1 minus x squared, then du is equal to minus 2x minus 2x dx. Okay, so then it works. <coughs> then it becomes, the integral becomes the integral becomes so what does it become? x dx is minus 1 over 2 du, uh, du, and this thing is u to the power, u to the power minus 1 over 2. Okay, so we can integrate this, and the integral then becomes uh, square root, square root u with a minus sign, right? If I take the derivative of this, I'll have 1 over 2 and 1 over 2, and I don't get this minus, so I have to get minus here, plus c. So this is minus u, I know what u is. This is minus square root 1 minus x squared plus c. Okay, so we can now check the de derivative of this. The derivative will give me 1 over square root of this, from the square root, I'll have 1 over 2, but this 2 will cancel it, and I'll have this minus killing this, and I'll have this. Okay? So we put this back. Okay, so we put this back into here. So what do we have? x arc tangent, uh, arc sine, arc sine x minus another minus plus 1 minus x squared plus c. Okay. 
<coughs> so that's the antiderivative of this function. Again, you have to check without anybody checking it before you that the derivative of that actually gives you this. Okay? So that's one advantage of uh, integration. The disadvantage is you never know what will work. You have to try several things until you get an answer. But once you get an answer, you can check whether it is correct or not. Okay, another typical things that we need to handle with integration by, par by parts is a polynomial times an exponential. <coughs> you see, integration by parts is useful when you multiply, when you are, when you are integrating a product of two different types of functions, uh, polynomial functions and trigonometric functions or exponential functions. Okay, so the other one, now we have another one like this. So before I do, do these signs, why don't I do a simple one? Okay, let me do first do a simple one. So <coughs> integral x e to the x dx. Okay. So here let's try u equals x because du is very simple. Then dv is e to the x dx, and v becomes e to the x because derivative of this is e to the x. Okay, so by integration by parts, I multiply these cross terms x e to the x minus integral this line e to the x dx, which is now easy x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. Okay, so you see if I have uh, x square here, here I will have x, okay, because if I have x square here, here I'll have x, I'm skipping the constants, then this I will deal with x to the e x, which I handled here. Okay, so you can do repeated integration by parts here. There is also something called tabular integration, which works only for x to the n e to the x, okay? But uh, <coughs> we don't need those tricks anymore since we do most of these things in the computer. Okay, so the other thing is when instead of a polynomial, I multiply exponential by a trigonometric one, okay? So in the previous examples, we multiplied a trigonometric function by x. Now we multiply a trigonometric function with exponential. So let's see the <coughs> example I have is e to the x sine x dx. <coughs> okay, so here let's take u equals sine x dv equals e to the x dx. Then du is equal to cosine x dx and v is e to the x. So I multiply this and this, sine x e to the x minus integral cosine x times e to the x dx. <coughs> so it looks like, at this point, it looks uh, disappointing because, okay, I know that now I have to apply integration by parts to this, but uh, I started with sine, I ended with cosine, I'll start with cosine, I'll end up with sine, so it looks like I'm not gaining anything, but our, our hope is that <coughs> when we are doing uh, these things in between, I'll catch up some coefficients here. So on this side, I'm hoping that I will not get this integral, but I'll get it with a different uh, coefficient than one. In that case, then I can take it to the other side. Nothing cancels. <coughs> okay, so we, we now try integral cosine x e to the x dx. Okay, let's say u equals cosine x dv equals e to the x dx du equals minus sine x dx. So this is our hope. Now I realize that uh, this will hopefully give me something nice. v is e to the x. Okay. <coughs> Okay. 
Okay, so let's let's put this thing in here. I multiply this. I have cosine x e to the x minus, <coughs> but I have another minus plus integral sine x d uh, sine x e to the x dx. e to the x dx. Okay, let's put this back in here. Now we put this back in here. So what I have here is sine x e to the x minus this thing. So minus cosine x e to the x minus this thing integral sine x e to the x dx. Okay, since I have plus uh, minus here, I can now take it to the other side. Okay, I have two of these. Okay, so I have two of these things and I have e to the x sine x dx is equal to one over two of these things. Okay, so I can take e to the x out. I have sine x minus cosine x. Okay, now let me put the constant here. So if I'm ever going to use it somewhere, I can decide what the constant will be later on. Okay, now you have to play with these things so that you don't get a surprise in the exams. Here, <coughs> instead of using u equals cosine x, I can use u equals e to the x. In that case, I'll simplify this and here I'll have plus. Okay, then these things will cancel, everything will cancel, and we will have zero equals zero, which is, which is correct, but useless, okay? then you don't despair because this is what happens in integration. Then you go back and you change the places. You try this, it works. Okay, so these things, so that's why in most cases, after you saw lots of examples, in most cases, the first thing you try works because you feel that the other way, you tried the other way in some other problem, it didn't give you anything. Okay, so experience is important. Uh, your hand must get used to these things. Okay, let's see how we are doing. We are doing fine. <coughs> okay, let's do one with arc tangent, and then let's see. I have uh, then I'll have interesting reduction formulas, etc., etc. Okay, so let's do one arc tangent. Is this here? Okay, so am I continuing the right number? Six, seven. Integral from zero to one, arc tangent x dx. Okay. <coughs> okay, so this is the area between <coughs> under the curve arc tangent from zero to uh, one. Okay, so we know how arc tangent goes. Okay. So it's asymptotic to pi over 2. Anyway, so here I try this with integration by parts. So I want to hit arc tangent x first of all. Then dv is dx. du is, you see, the advantage of knowing the derivatives of these things is when you take the derivative, trigonometric function disappears. You obtain an algebraic function, and there is hope that you will handle it. What was the derivative of arc tangent? 1 over 1 plus x squared, right? So you have to remember a few derivatives in your life. And v equals x. So I look at this thing. There is hope in integrating this, OK? So this is going to be ln of 1 plus x squared. Maybe divide by 2 or multiply by 2. We'll find that out later. OK, so I continue. This times this, x arc tangent x from 0 to 1 minus integral from 0 to 1 x dx over 1 plus x squared. <coughs> okay, so let's evaluate. We, we can evaluate this. When x is equal to 1, arc tangent 1 is what? Pi over 7. Huh? Pi over 7. Did you ever see, see pi over 7 anywhere? <laughs> what, what, what did you say? Pi over, pi over 4. OK, so this is 1 times pi over 4 minus 
x equals 0. Okay, the arc tangent 0 is 0. This is 0, so there's no problem here. Minus this one. Okay, so here, if I put 2 here, well, let's do this professionally. If I put 2, 1 plus, if I put 2 here, it will be just like this one. So here we use the substitution, use the substitution u equals 1 plus x squared. Then du is already there, 2x dx. I just don't have 2, so I multiply by 2, divide by 2. So this is going to be 1 over 2 ln 1 plus x squared. OK, so let's check. The derivative of this is 1 over this times the inside gives me extra 2, which I already took out. So plus c, well, this is, there is no plus c. This is from x equals 0 to 1. OK, so this is pi over 4 minus when <coughs> x equals 1, I have ln 2. So this is 1 over 2 ln 2 minus plus, well, when x equals 0, ln 1 is 0. So I don't have anything. So this is the answer. OK? <coughs> OK? OK, then we have a reduction formula. So before the reduction formula, maybe we can do this. OK, so let's do this before the reduction formula. So this is integral from 0 to pi over 4, x times second square x dx. Okay. <coughs> we immediately recognize second square as the derivative of tangent. Okay, so this is now very easy with the integration by parts. So u equals x and dv equals second square x dx. The next line is easy. du is just dx and v is uh, tangent x. Okay, I can integrate tangent x because this is cosine over sine. Cosine is derivative of sine, so this is ln sine. Okay, so this is equal to this times this x tangent x uh, from zero to pi over four minus this part integral from 0 to pi over 4 tangent x dx. OK, so when x is pi over 4, tangent is 1, just like we did here. So this is pi over 4. When x is 0, well, both of them are 0, minus. OK, so let us look at this part. This thing here is cosine x dx over sine x. So this is d sine x over sine x. So this is actually d ln sine x. Okay, I'm integrating this. So I'm just having ln sine x from 0 to, ah, why did I have 0 here? Because this is not tangent x, OK? This is cotangent x. OK, so let's do this with cotangent Sine x over cosine x dx. So this is minus d cosine x over cosine x. And this is equal to minus ln uh, d of d of minus, minus d of ln cosine x. OK, let's check. This is 1 over cosine times uh, minus sine minus. OK, so I get this. This is tangent. So this is ln cosine x. Cosine x from 0 to pi over 4. OK, so cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over square root 2, right? OK, so let us write this pi over 4 minus, OK, let's take the minuses in our mind. So this is minus ln 1 over square root 2 plus uh, cosine 0 is 1, ln 1 is 0. So this is the answer. OK, so we can also simplify this, right? Should we simplify this? Let's try. Pi over 4 
minus uh, plus 1 over 2 ln 2. Hmm? Is it like that? <coughs> Did I simplify it here? Yeah, that's what I did here. But I, I found minus here for some reason. Minus here, uh, well, maybe. Okay, you check the sign here. I think this is correct. Okay. Okay, now let's uh, look at one famous application of uh, integration by parts. Integration by parts is generally used to uh, get reduction formulas because you see it reduces a integral into a simpler one. If the simpler one still reads reduction, you try to, find, to see a general pattern. Okay, so sometimes you get very interesting patterns. So let us start with one of these things. So where is my pattern? Uh, here, okay, so I say recall we had this. We didn't have this, so maybe it is on one of the previous pages. Yeah, sine and x. Okay, so let's look at this. So recall first of all that uh, recall first that integral sine x dx is equal to what minus cosine x right uh, I'm taking this plus a constant so I'm taking indefinite integrals right and we can also integrate sine square Let's make this obvious, sine square x dx. This is because 1 minus cosine 2x over 2 dx, right? This is how you integrate this. 1 minus cosine square is sine square, 2 sine square over this. Okay, so <coughs> you integrate this. This is 1 over 2x minus uh, 1 over 4 sine 2x plus c. Okay, so the derivative of this is uh, 2 cosine. Okay, so I can integrate sine to the power 1. I can integrate sine to the power 2. So if I have sine to the power 2017, if I can reduce it to one of these powers, I'll stop because I know the answer. Okay, so that's the <coughs> case. Now, let m be larger than 2. Well, actually, I don't need this because I can reduce it to 0. Okay, so maybe, maybe I can also do this. Sine, so this is sine to the power 1. Sine to the power 0, x is just x, right? x plus c. So maybe I don't need this part. Okay. Because our reduction formula will uh, reduce the integral of sine to the power n to the integral of sine n uh, to the power n minus 2. So we go steps uh, 2 by 2. When we come here, well, we know the answer, but uh, theoretically, I can also go down to here. Okay? So it is enough to know only these things. Okay? So now let m be larger than or equal to 2. What is integral sine to the power n x dx. So that's the question. Okay, so we'll do this by integration by parts. Sine n x dx. Okay, so <coughs> any idea about what we should do? Okay, we'll, we'll try. Okay, so you are probably trying. So let's see what I tried here. You try several things. This thing looks uh, e working. Sign. I take one of these things as u, and then the other d as dv. dv is remaining sine x dx. I take the derivative of this. du is n minus 1 sine n minus 2x times cosine x dx. Okay, I took the derivative of this. First, I took the, to the power n minus 1 derivative. Then I take the derivative of inside. And then I'll integrate this. V is minus cosine x. 
Okay, integration by part says that multiply this and this. So I have minus cosine x sine n minus 1 x plus, uh, well, I am putting plus because I have minus here, n minus 1, n minus 1 times sine n minus 2 x cosine square x dx. Okay. Okay, so you see now here this cosine square, I can write it as 1 minus sine square x. This sine square will give me, with, together with this, the integral I started with. This one will give me the, the uh, integral with the 2 less power. Okay, so if we write this thing, so I have this minus cosine x sine n minus 1 x plus uh, n minus 1 integral. Okay, I have this thing now. Sine n minus 2 x dx and I have plus n minus 1 integral sine n x dx. Okay, so I have this thing equal to this thing. Okay, so putting this in here, so let me write this simplified one. Uh, I have this. <coughs> so if I take this uh, to the other side, so there must be a minus sign here. Okay, okay, I have a minus sign here, so this thing comes with the minus sign. <coughs> so if I take it to the other side, I have minus n. Uh, I have n minus 1 on the other side plus this thing. I have minus n there. So this, I have plus n there. I divide everything by n. Okay, so I'm trying to say that we, we, we have to divide by n. Okay, so integral sine n x dx is equal to 1 over n. Okay, so minus 1 over n cosine x sine n minus 1 x plus n minus 1 over n sine n minus 2 x dx. Okay, so this is the thing we have. <coughs> okay, so I know what this will be. Okay, so I read this as follows. The, whatever power I see here, here I have one less divided by that power. Okay, to make, to make uh, absolute use of this thing, Let's, instead of uh, looking at indefinite integral, let's look at a definite integral, which makes this thing 0. This guy will be 0 at uh, x equals 0, and this part will be 0 when x equals pi over 2. So if we integrate this between 0 and pi over 2, we won't have this thing. We'll have a very nice reduction formula. Okay, so let's start with that reduction formula. So using this, we have integral from 0 to pi over 2 sine to the power n x d x is equal to n minus 1 over n, 0 to pi over 2 sine n minus 2 x dx. Okay, so now I can keep going. Let's go one more step n over n minus 1 over n is here. Then I divide by this power. So you see this power comes here. Then I subtract 1. I divide by this power, n minus 2. Then I subtract 1, n minus 3. OK? So I have, so this thing will go, uh, well, let me stop here, 0 pi over 2 sine n minus 4 x dx. So this will go step by step until we come either to this or to this. So if you come <coughs> here from 0 to pi over 2, you'll have pi over 2. 
Okay, so if you come here, you will get uh, one, okay? Because at pi over two, you'll get zero minus at zero, this will give you minus one, so you'll get one. So the last, fa the last factor in this case will be one. The last fa factor in this case will be pi over two, depending on the parity of this. So we have the following formulas. Uh, let me, well, instead of driving these in front of your eyes, let me just write the result here. So let, let us use notation, this notation. Integral n is equal to this thing, 0 to pi over 2 sine nx dx. Okay, so I'm trying to concentrate on the parity of n. So I, instead of writing all of this, just changing this n here, I'll make it obvious here. Okay, then we found i 2n is something else, i 2n plus 1 is something else. And it turns out that these things are as follows. If it is even, <coughs> if it is even, I'm subtracting. I'm always, whether n is odd or even, I'm always subtracting odd things here. So if n is even, I'll always have odd things here. So starting from this part back, I'll have 1, 3, 5, etc. and it will go up to 2n minus 1. Well, actually, <coughs> 2n minus 1 will be somewhere here. 2n minus 1 will be here, this one. So the first thing I see here, I wrote as the last one because it's more aesthetic to write it in this way. And at the end, I have 2n here, okay? Well, you see 2n is always one more than this, so this is 6, 4, 2. And if it is even, <coughs> if it is even, I'll end up here. And here, the last factor was pi over 2, right? So I have pi over 2 here. <coughs> if it is odd, then you see from an odd number, I'm subtracting odd things. So I always have even numbers here. So it's almost the reciprocal of this. But in the following form, this is then uh, 2 four, six, etc., up to 2n, okay? But what you have in the denominator is always one more, okay? Just like here, it's one more. So this is 2n plus one here. This is seven, this is five, this is three. <coughs> okay, so, uh, and the last factor from there is one, okay? So this is the so these are the formulas for these things. If we had time, I would solve very, some very interesting things. OK, so just, just let me summarize what we do with this. OK, let me erase this. Uh, I won't fill all of this, so don't get discouraged that I'm cleaning all the board. OK. OK, once we have something like this, there is a hope that you obtain pi from these things. OK, so this is how you do this. So first of all, observe that, that sine x is between 0 and 1 for x in 0 pi over 2. So that's where we are integrating. So we have sine to the power, uh, where do I do this? I have, I want to calculate all these powers. Okay, so sine 2n plus 1x is less than or equal to sine 2nx. Since x is less than 1, the more power I take, it becomes smaller. Okay, sine 2n plus 2x, but everything is positive. So when I integrate, I'll have i 2n plus 2 less than or equal to i 2n plus 1 less than or equal to i 2n. Divide by i 2n. You get i 2n plus 2 over i 2n less than or equal to i 2n plus 1 over i 2n. 
less than or equal to one. This thing you can immediately calculate, okay, because they are of the same type. You see this one, you just, for when you say 2m plus 2, you just have an extra term here. That extra term comes here. So that thing is 2n plus 1 over 2m plus 2. Okay, so this thing is between this and this. Take limits, limit as n goes to infinity. We have limit n goes to infinity of i 2n plus 1 over i 2n is equal to 1. Okay, this goes to 1, this goes to 1. Now you, write, you can write this, write this and simplify and take 2 over pi to the other side. You will have, you get pi over 2 is equal to, so let me write the result. Pi over 2 is 2 over 1 times 2 over 3. 4 over 3 times 4 over 5. Okay, so let me write one more. 6 over 6, uh, 6 over 5 over 6 over 7. So this goes on like this forever. Okay, so what you are writing in the general term is 2n over 2n minus 1 and 2n over 2n plus 1. So you keep multiplying. So we have an infinite product giving us pi over 2. Okay, so here you see, we didn't do any trick. Everything is straightforward because you, if we know the formulas for this. When you write this, you get this. The only thing is uh, when you write this, you have to rearrange terms because in this case, general, this thing will appear here, this thing will appear here. You just rearrange it so that it looks beautiful. Okay, so that's all for integration by parts. I'll see you on Friday with our usual surprise quiz.